for the Cranky Ducklings. It is Vindicta. Quack, quack. And his opponent fighting for Apprentice Esports, the Red Zerg. It is Uko. Am I saying that right? Uko? Uko, Uko yeah. Uko. 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 Um, okay. There we yeah, go. it's he's. So Uko, uh, anyone who's unfamiliar with Uko, he is one of the gentlest, kindest streamers out there. He's just got the most soothing and relaxing voice. You know, you listen to him and it could it could lull the angriest, most hormonal teenager into a completely docile and just upstanding member of society. Huh. <laughs> That's quite the superpower to have, <laughs> right? It makes him makes him a very effective uh, effective tool when calming <laughs> down, you know, <laughs> a murderous hormone teenagers. Yeah, the police come in and they bring forth a tablet with this stream on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, they just play it on the morning announcements at high yep. schools. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, wonderful. I mean, if that was something, I, 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 if I was a murderer, right? <laughs> that, would, <laughs> that would stop me, in fact, yeah. <laughs> He's just, and, and the crazy thing is too, like, he, he just plays so much StarCraft. Like, he loves the game. And he's got, like, a lot of... He's always constantly thinking about it, and he's like, how can I optimize stuff? How can I have my own fun little openers to make uh, my stream more enjoyable and entertaining? He's just... He's a... He's like the NA... Hmm. What's, I was going to say he's like the NA Zerg Big Gabe, but, like, that's not really a fair comparison because, like, Big Gabe mm. is just so ridiculously good. Not to say Uko is not good. Uko is very good. But, I mean, Big Gabe is, you know top four in the world at IEM yep. Katowice. Good. Uko does have just like that consistency though when I watch him play and that's fun. Oh, look at this SCV showing up at the third Ooh. base. Oh, just barely doesn't get the denial. Nice shift click on the build right there from Uko to make sure he gets that hatchery down. That could have been nasty if he doesn't get that base down. Oh, for sure. That delay would have been quite a snowball effect or a potential snowball effect for later down the line. Uh, but it's good for him that he managed to get it still sub three minutes here. Still a reasonable uh, reasonable third base timing. I don't... Did he lose a drone? No, he didn't even lose a drone, right? The only money that he lost was that drone going in as an extractor and then cancelling the extractor. Yeah, he only uh, lost... Which is uh, fixed mineral. Yeah, exactly. It's it's yeah. two two mineral trips, effectively. Uh, like, it's it's no biggie. Um, so he was... That's, that's advantage. Small advantage, but advantage for Uko. Uh, big mental advantage, I would say. Hmm. Now yeah, this, for sure. This is quite interesting out of Vindicta. He is... Oh, Uko, can he get the chase down? Oh, it'd be really nice <laughs> if he could get that Reaper, but now the Hellions do pop out, and the Overlord so shows Uko that those Hellions are out. This is an incredibly fast stim, and with a stim this quick, it makes me wonder if there might be an intention for a two-base all-in out of Vindicta, like just a big five racks commitment that's the only reason i can think of that you get stim this quickly hmm. well maybe i don't see that many barracks nor any in production yeah not yet but um, he didn't go yet. fast third command center it, it'll be like mm -hmm. a, a developing thing like you'll get those barracks in the next you know 30 seconds to a minute if he decides to go for that ah uh, there we go never mind it's just an uber fast stim and he'll probably just want a fast combat shield behind this but I don't think you need stim that quickly. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely something. Maybe he thought that would be more of a circling presence on his side of the map. I don't know. Well, he still has the Hellions to deal with those. You don't necessarily need to have your Marines also have stim. Um, hmm. Hmm. Well, I'm sure there's a reason behind it, right? Like you said, they both play quite a bit of StarCraft too. They do think about these things quite a bit. Yeah, so it's... It'd be, a, it'd be a, a good question. Even, like, compared to the standard time, it's it's not even that big of a difference. Yeah, like, it just means that if he starts up combat shields right now, you know, he, he gets it way faster than we would normally see. So maybe he'll try and do something like that. Maybe he'll, like, get a slightly faster armory and try and hit a stim combat shields armory timing with some hellbats. Mm. Or maybe it's absolutely nothing and I'm just making a big deal out of nothing. Actually, oh, queen does go down. 
That's pretty nice. Yeah, a little bit out of position there. And a good surround with the Hellions really securing that kill. Uh, Vindicta jumping on that opportunity. You can see that he's a player that likes to be busy. Has multiple units all across the map. Uh, on the top side as well, that Viking hunting for overlords. And uh, yeah, just kind of doing his thing. Uh, a real ADHD uh, StarCraft player in a way. It feels like sometimes <laughs> watching him play, it's yeah, as well. It, yeah, he's an extremely active player, and it's it's benefits you so much in this game to you know always be doing something. That's that's how Bion loves to play, and that's why so many players uh, became fans of Bion. Is he was always doing something. He was always micring like a god. Now Vindicta scans a little bit, clears a little bit of creep out here, but Uko knows the importance of this position. He respreads the creep, and he's already started knocking down these rocks. Uh, looks like, looks like, yeah, it looks, Vindicta just wants to maybe move into the main base with the faster than normal combat shields, but mm -hmm. it, it just ends up being a thing that he just decided to go for. It, and it has yeah. no bearing really on the outcome of this game. Now, what might have a bearing on the outcome of this game is this very fast spire from Uko. If he can catch Vindicta with a drop somewhere, like force the drop away, and then he shows up with, you know, 10 mutas on top of said drop, he could kill 20 supply in an instant and be put himself very far ahead. Yeah, but yeah, for sure. It would be a blow to remember for Vindicta when the Zerglings and the Banelings then come running into his bases afterwards, perhaps. A uh, little bit of an attempt here by Vindicta. Has the Widow Mines to kind of secure a pathway here. Still a lot of queens to kind of tank all that damage, though. I don't think he's really going to get much other than a couple of creep tuners. Yeah, it looks like he's really trying to grind his way through. This does kill one of the queens and will bait them in to the Widow Mines. Oh, but look at Vindicta retargeting oh, the mine no! here so that it does it. Oh, man. Uko was They're really trying to get it. that. He, yeah. He, oh, he only got three kills. Oh, that's so disappointing. That's like, that feels like you should get rewarded so nicely for that. But he gets like so little out of it, like two extra Zergling kills or something. Yeah, yeah if Uko was a really nice person, he would have been like, all right, well, you know what? You've tried so hard. <laughs> You've earned seven. this, yeah. You've earned it, but no, no, no. He wants to win as well, and, and good for him. Uh, is that the Mutalisk arriving in Vindictus base? I think it might be. Yes, sir. It is. Uh they're not going to get too much done so far. Uh, they get a couple of SCDs. Oh, nice split from Vindicta on the top side. Mainly trying to connect, not getting too much done. Lift it up. Oh. Nope. Ah. Uh, and <laughs> Uko, he is also a very active player. Very high APM. Something we got to note, by the way. Uko forgot his plus one melee, and he was already going delayed upgrades. There's going to be a timing where it'll be 2-2 two -two versus 0-1. And that is going to be a dangerous and deadly timing for Uko. He is going to have oh, to be yeah. extremely careful about that, especially with Mutaling Bane versus uh, Biomine. Yeah. Yeah, the Banelings are relatively okay, but, like, they could die so quickly to those, like, big marine walls and the target firing is just going to be off the chain. It's, it's going to be so quick. Um, it, it could be dangerous, but he's okay on supply. His work account is looking very solid. He's well, still got a reasonable flock of Mutalisk. He's got 14 now, four more just finishing up. Yeah, does have plus one attack for these mutas as well. Ooh, he takes the fight, decides to jump on these units, and actually the Hellbats were on move command there a little bit, so that actually goes better for uh, Uko than I would have expected. And now Vindicta has to be a little bit scared. He has to be worried about Uko counterattacking him at any moment. And that alone actually makes that engagement, I think, worthwhile with the mutas and layings, because now... Vindicta, I mean, on this a map the size of Tropical Sacrifice, you gotta be so scared about something like this. That also buys Vindic or uh, Uko more time. Uh, he, to mention the drone count you were talking about, he had thrown down like 15 drones all at once uh, mm. in the mid game, so he, he rocketed up to 93 drones. And Mutaling Bane, if you can, if you can get some good damage done with the Mutas, you can oftentimes force your Terran opponent to really overcommit into some fights that they just shouldn't take because they get either frustrated or they start uh, taking damage and they get you know, desperate. Yeah, Finlicta here trying to make stuff happen on three fronts at the same time. So far, not quite working out for him. 
Ooh, some bailings into rocks, but luckily those rocks were low, low HP. Yeah, he only ends up, uh, funnily enough, only one Muta, or one Baneling actually went into yeah. those rocks, which is <laughs> kind of funky. Ooh, we are going to see the Ling Bane trying to connect, but no, he'll uh, he'll realize that Vindicta was paying attention. Tried to go in on the fourth base, and Vindicta, I mean, he responded very appropriately on both sides. He was ready to go. The Planetary Fortress kind of took care of everything on its own. This single drop does come back down on the bottom right side. It already forced a cancel. It's probably going to get another one, but here comes the damage from these Mutas. Uh, the Marines are going to take a while to get here. Oh, Widow Mines will get some... Uh, gets a decent shot. But I still think this was a pretty successful move for Uko. Oh. Oh, oh no. Okay. Oh. <laughs> well, it, it would have been an extremely successful move for Uko if he gets those hits. Oh, or, imagine, but, uh. imagine the look on the, the face of that Medivac pilot right there. <laughs> this is a flock of Mutalisk right next to you. Man, scary times right there. The Mutalisk... Ah. It's just so many right now. 26 of them available. Vindicta not messing around with it either. I thought for a moment he was moving in position to try and box these guys in. But, well, so far this, this bottom right corner just seemingly always safe. Now we see another one of those balls of Marines kind of there in position. But he seems to be trying to play it safe. Oh, oh, oh go! No, 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 no! Oh, what a catch. Oh. That's a lot of mutas getting picked off right there. And now the Widow Mine is going to connect on them as well. Another one does burrow, get, but gets taken down with the Overseer's help. Uko loses a lot. 11 mutas getting replaced right here. Oh, these Widow Mines. Uh, uh. Come on, come on. What of you? Ah. <laughs> it does connect on the mutas, but not as much damage as it could have been. 13 mutas went down during that. And Uko is now... Well, I mean, he's, he's not that far down in terms of resources lost, considering his mutaling Bane. But he also hasn't been able to do any damage, really. Still, Uko's on a gigantic bank. Does he have... What does he have for his tech? He doesn't have an Ultralisk Cavern. Doesn't really have Lurkers as a follow-up. But Uko's got... How much larva? 86 larva. Oh, my God. Wow. That's a lot of larva. Yeah. That's a Remax in the waiting. There's not going to be any problem right there. Vindicta is putting on some pressure onto this bottom right side base once more. And does find some success. Takes it out. You know, those who are persistent are able to get the spoils now and again. Yeah. And, well, Uko is not massively ahead on base. Taking uh, space away from Vindicta here again. Pretty good. But overall... See the, the units will stab actually. I think Phoenix is still trading a lot better. Yeah, it's a lot certainly. closer than I thought it was looking at the, the overall minerals loss, but hmm. we haven't oh. really had a massive clash, clash just quite yet either. It, it seems like they're both somewhat avoiding one another and they need to be caught out of position before, <laughs> before people die, really. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing a burrow upgrade coming in from Uko oh, right yeah. here. Considering how much he's trying to drag his opponent around the map, uh, he hasn't focused on his creep spread much heading through the, through the mid game. He's focused, focused more on the army maneuvers. And that means that he's not enveloping this map the way you really want to. Ooh, he does lose his overseer on the way through. Thor is going to get a little bit of damage done to these mutas, but he will get the Thor kill. Another Widowmine is going to go off. It's the same Widowmine. It's killed like, well, it's killed <laughs> two mutas on the way through, but still, nice stuff coming in from. Vindicta, and he, he makes uh, Uko pay a pretty big toll. Another Widowmine just smattered around the map. I love these these individual Widowmine plays. I think they're so great, at especially against a Mutaling Bane player who's going to be constantly trying to rotate and find openings. Yeah, for sure. Coming in again with one single medevac. It's very important to still be across the map and keep your Zerg opponent on his toes. You can't just let him... A uh, free reign across your side of the map with all those mutilists because then, you know, if they just dart around enough, it, it's a matter of time. Everyone is going to mess up and leave something open for those mutilists to take. Um, so, all the time you can stop those mutilists from having a potential opportunity there is always absolutely fantastic. Uh, interesting trade here. Looks that like. That was a good cleanup for Uko. I felt like you wanted to throw away units to get higher tech, like maybe 
I'm not sure, maybe Ghost or something. Oh, actually, hold that thought. We are going to see an attack coming in from Uko. He tries to jump on his opponent's army. He does get one of the Thors. And Lings and Banes are going to flood in on top of this. He will break this position. But is it going to be worthwhile for him? He's actually broken Vindicta's bank. Vindicta is no longer maxed out, whereas Uko is able to rebuild a lot more effectively. How many mutas just went down, though? 15 mutas did go down. Oh, there's no mutas left on the field. Oh my goodness. Mm. He's rebuilding seven ultras at a time, though. And unlike Namshar's ultras, these are going to be 3-3 three, three chitinous plating ultras. Fusion Core is on the way, though. And there we go. Liberator range now in production as well. Good amount of Liberators, two at a time. Will require those bad boys to really deal the DPS to take out those oh. ultralists. That was a Especially big Especially because you control. only have seven Marauders. Only seven. Yeah, this 16 Widow Mines. Oh man, he is really not expecting this Ultralisk transition. We're going to see a big bio run by on the top side. Okay, it is actually a drop, but oh, Vindicta oh, is going to lose these. Vindicta. Yeah. Oh man, that is rough. Once again, losing a lot of his economy here. Vindicta backed up into the corner as Uga is just taking most of the map. Wonderful, just taking control and uh, dealing with whatever Vindicta is throwing at him. Yeah, Uko's game plan is very simple right now. He's saying, you don't get to ever take a fifth base. And if you try, I'm going to crush it. And that's it. And Vindicta let him get away with an amazing amount of mining. And now Uko is just keeping the economic pressure on Uko or on Vindicta by forcing this. We are going to see another attempt to get in on this fifth base, but I mean, it wasn't even landed yet. Uh, this Drilling Claw Widowmine drop is going to get in here. Is going to find some big damage. Oof. Eight drones, but a lot of lings as well. Corruptors. Yeah, gets away with one of those uh, as well also. Another drop on the top side. Or is that a Liberator? That is a Liberator. Uh, Uko is rebuilding a lot of drones right now. Nice transfuse to keep these queens alive. Man, these queens are going to take a long time to kill this Liberator. <laughs> it is a plus one armor Liberator. Yeah, and the queens don't have any upgrades. By the way, we got to mention the air upgrades for Uko. He's about to be on 3-2 for his Corruptors. Wow. Well, I guess he had Mutalisk for a long time. Uh, yeah, he was yeah. making them uh, battle mutas for sure. Uko does need to find a way to continue to get something done, though. Oh, Snipe's going to come on in. Not quite enough to kill that Ultralisk. Uh, the Ghost oh, Count that is... Orbital. On the way. Sorry. Yeah, that's a that's a good body blocking award roll. <laughs> just in time as well. He's like, oh, you want to go up here? Quick, quick. And then he just gets it. Very nice. Where do you go in here? It's just stuck. You, you can't go in. Maybe there's space on the bottom now. Yeah, I think, the, I think he's forced enough of a rotation that if he goes right this moment, he will yep. find an opening here. And there's the Liberators trying to siege up, but they're a little bit late. Widow Mines will get some okay connections, but this is going to go very well for Uko. He's going to shove his opponent away from this position. The Ultralists are chasing down the SCVs, as too are the Banelings. Oh, those SCVs, there's like 20 of them on that gas. But it doesn't even matter, actually. Uko just says, I've got my eye on the prize, and he's going to take down game number one. Vindicta gave Uko so much freedom, and Uko just ran with it and didn't stop running. <laughs> Yeah, he just <laughs> absolutely took control of that map. Um, Vindicta, I mean, that was that was a good effort right there. Some some all right moves, but uh, like you said, yeah, he just had the control of that game get away from him. Um, yeah, <laughs> well played by Uko, really. I mean, he didn't um, he didn't drop that much overall. Like I'm trying to think, um, he didn't take any drone damage initially, really. That one hatchery that died at one time, but that was so far into the game, it didn't really matter anymore. Um, right, it could have been the start, perhaps, of some sort of a, uh, a struggle with Vindicta there, bringing himself into a reasonable position, but it just just wasn't meant to be. Uko, two on top of things. Yeah, Uko, exactly. That's, that's kind of the name of the game right there. Uko, two on top of things. Uh, if he manages to win this series... He puts himself into an outstanding position to make playoffs because he's already played Neeb in this group. He still has to play Namshar, which is going to be a pretty important match as well. But if he manages to win today and then wins versus Namshar, I think that actually 
just about locks up playoffs for him. It would be extremely unlikely for him to miss the playoffs at that point. That would put him to the magic number of four series wins. Getting a little bit ahead of myself because it's only game one. Yeah. You know, that's that's two series, but like he looked pretty darn good there. Yeah. It would be exciting for both these players, I feel like, to to manage their way through. Anyway, regardless, in the bottom right side, the Red Zerg from Apprentice Esports, it is Uko. And his opponent, spawning up the top left for the Cranky Ducklings. Can he turn it around? It is Vindicta. Yeah, this is... This would be an amazing result for Uko if he were to be able to... Uh, take this one down, and ooh, he is going up to a 17th drone, which means he's going for a gas, he's going for a pool, and he has got either either one, he thinks his opponent is going for a proxy racks, and he's trying to, you know, counter that, or he's got some aggressive plans for the next little bit. Hmm, yeah, with the gas, I, I always assume that this is just gonna go... Uh, pretty wild, pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No SCV scout here for Vindicta so far either. Please say what you were uh, gonna say. No, I was just gonna say I, I got to agree. I, whenever I see the gas first, I always think, yeah, you wanna you wanna do something against this. You wanna maybe that's a Ling Bane all in. Maybe that's a Roach Ravager rush. But it feels like a lot of the time you're gonna try and get something done with this. Yeah. Yeah, and well, you kind of have to with this investments here. Uh, it's very hard to just gobble up the map if you change your mind and you're like, no, you know what, let's go back into droning here. Um, very difficult to do, and Dixie will have a much easier time to <clears throat> get his aggression going uh, successfully across the map. Yeah, uh, Uko, by the way, does want to deny... Oh! Oh. Okay, he's just going to let his opponent scout this. <laughs> and that is extremely weird to huh. me. Uh, he started up yeah. lane speed. This makes me wonder if this is a build that Impact used to do quite a bit. Oh, oh! if he loses track of that SCV, that's very unfortunate. Because now, now Vindicta is going to get a free scout. Uh, well, that's, that's huge, actually. Yep. Uh, because Uko, actually, he's, he was faking an all-in straight up. Straight up was faking an all-in, and Vindicta is going to get to see that. Very cheeky move from Uko, but maybe a little bit too on the nose. It would have been such a nice play if this SCV didn't get to scout what it sees right now, which is no additional mining. Hang on. Six more lings? Hmm. I mean, there's no wall at the natural, but I mean, Hellion production is about to start. Even though two Hellions in the beginning should be enough against those lings if microed properly. You yeah. got the two uh, marines there as well, shooting from the high ground. Oh, a little this... bunker going down. Wow, he is he's doing things, man. Yeah, this is really funky. Uh, it's actually going to be very difficult to clear this bunker if the Hellions can get across the map and the Reaper gets inside. Now, the Lings are going to move forward. He will get... Oh, okay, this is actually pretty good for Uko. This is absolutely worth it. He's going to get three SCVs and a brand new fresh mule. Oh, please kill the mule. Please kill the mule. That's such a high value target. <laughs> oh, elite. He's like, that will die on its own eventually. <laughs> That's like 175 minerals that he could have killed yeah. off right there. That's actually such a high impact uh, miss. Like the fact that he yep. didn't kill that. Four SCVs still makes this move worth it, I think, for Uko and actually puts him at least a little bit ahead. And the funny thing is, these lings are actually going to clear this bunker so easily with no Hellions here. So it's actually, it actually justifies... Oh, oh, please oh. kill the bunker. Please... Ah. Uh, I mean, he gets mm. the, the Reaper, which is nice, and denies an additional scout, but... Yeah, I guess he's focused on denying the scout. That's that's not a bad move. Nice around. Yeah. Yeah, I was surprised he got it that so cleanly there. It was a uh, Reaper. I thought that would get away, but no, sir. Uko, once again, on top of things... Yeah. The Hellions trying to poke onto the Creeper once more. There are the Queens ready to defend. He's got a good amount of Queens, actually. Seven of them available. And I thought that would be more because he has three Queens on either side. So I guess his, yeah, his natural base just doesn't have a Queen for the moment. He's making another one. He's getting more Queens. 
Yeah, he's uh he's already well set up to deal with this. He's got the spore crawlers finishing up well in time for when these banshees arrive. And he already gets a decent bit of damage onto one of the banshees as well. This is this is quite a nice start here for Uko. I gotta say I'm I'm really favoring his position so far as we head into the mid game. Yeah, it's the same here, man. He is uh, just realizing what's happening and making some good calls about it. Um, there's the Hellions once more, but again, uh, I suppose there's not that much creep spread that's happening because of the Hellions still. Like, the Queens do feel a little bit more cautious, uh, but they're not throwing down the creep tube either, and then they're getting killed. They are harvesting up those energy points. They'll be able to utilize them later down the line anyway. Yeah, and he gets a relatively quick layer, which means the Overseer is going to be out. He's going to be able to deal with these Banshees in a more mobile way as well. Uh, we are seeing Vindicta playing rather standard on the follow, but it's going to be tanks to start things up. Uh, he didn't really do any kind of tank push in game number one. Let's we'll see if maybe he decides to go for something uh, utilizing that. Oh, Uko. Oh, man. This barely gets the cancel in time. But I think this is going to get canceled oh. again. Oh, cancel. Oh, no, my. There we go. That's, that's a start. Uh, that's a uh, from the top. Yeah, pretty <laughs> massive start to say the very least. That's a big misstep from Uko. And that's really painful. He's also a little bit late on his gas mining, so he doesn't have the money to start up uh, both 1 1 and centrifugal hooks, which means that as this. 1-1 one, one, uh, combat shields timing hits from Vindicta. Uh, there's going to be a, a decent bit of time where Uko is going to have a bit of a rougher time dealing with this. I still like his position overall because, I mean, his, his worker count, it kind of exploded uh, quite fast. I still like his position, but I don't like it as much as I, I feel like I could have considering how the openings went. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right, but, uh, you know... Oh, with the gas mining concern, I guess he could use, he, he could have used the extra minerals here to rebuild that hatchery. So, kind of works out for him in that remark, I guess. Mm, uh, funny thing. Scan's going to come down from Vindicta, and that tells me that uh, he's a little bit worried about maybe Mutas again. Doesn't see them. It is going to be four Gasling Bane, which means that it's going to be a huge commitment on it, just these very basic units for the Zerg. Ling counterattack is coming in onto the third base. We'll be able to find a couple of the Hellions. And actually, with these additional Lings, ooh, if he could have gotten the wraparound there initially, he would have been able to win the fight. But instead, it is Vindicta getting a much better fight here. Meanwhile, on the aggressive side for Vindicta, he is making a lot of progress against this hatchery. And that Bane speed, it's not done yet. Yeah, it's still quite a bit away. It looks so close on the production tab, but once you're in this position with Marines already on top of you, it, it just lasts forever, right? Yeah. Just 10 seconds. It takes so long before it's done. Oh my god, it's still not done. It's... Uh, there we go. Finally, two bangings for me. And there you go. <laughs> nice target fire right there from Vindicta. Ultimately, Uko does clean this up and pushes this back, and now his 1-1 one -one is going to be completed by the time this... Uh, next engagement starts up, but that was a, a pretty nice, you know, minute or so for Vindicta. Uko, oh no, he pulled his lings all the way. He is going to lose this fourth base after fighting for it for so hard and giving up so many units. This ling counterattack, well, it might actually find a lot of damage here. Reinforcements are not out in big numbers, and Vindicta is just going to pull the, uh, pull the SCVs. Nice hold position right there. Yeah, that is holding down everything, actually. That is... Well, mine work is still okay, but looking at the overall work account... I mean, that... I'm starting to see a lot of fate here for uh, for Vindicta's position, man. Yeah, exactly. It's nine workers, which is not great, but I mean, he killed a fourth base, and it could have been, because of how his production was ebbing and flowing, it could have been, like, 20 workers, easily, and the Marines going down, and Ling's, at this point, still in the natural expansion. Third base still not remining. Like, that could have gotten so out of hand for Vindicta, but he really crisis managed that extremely well. And now he gets back in here, forces a cancel on the other fourth base of Uko. Vindicta is really starting to find his stride in this game uh, game two. Yeah, he's being active across the map and actually finding those moments where Uko is just not quite there with the Queens and the Bainings and the Zerglings. Trying to target down the Metavex, but they all managed to escape. Banelings into this third, fourth, and Dicta, and he seems to be ready for it all. 
His upgrades looking sharp. Not too far ahead of his opponent, however, but you know, it's alright. Getting the, the hive deck going though. Ultralisk probably on the menu pretty soon. Could, yeah, could potentially be Ultralisks, could be into those Vipers. We haven't seen a Hydralisk den yet, so Lurkers are not one of those options just yet. But uh, Uko is certainly still in a position where he has plays to make, but he is running out of running out of those plays. Like he, He's going to have to find a good fight pretty soon, and he definitely can't afford to lose his fourth base again. But he will actually give it up right here, right now. The Widowmine count is at 9, which is very scary to deal with, even though... They don't have Drilling Claws, which, uh, well, he probably should at this point. Because, like, yeah, I think he's got a dedicated tech lab for his factory. Ooh, oh. nice. Nice move right there from Uko, spreading off just a couple of Ling Bane to go for this. But there's some big Widowmine shots towards the end. 10 kills, 17 kills. Uh, Uko, it looked good for him initially in that couple of fights. Oh, no. But now we see a ton of Marines getting in on top of these Queens. The Queens will not be able to transfuse through this, and Uko will not be able to live through this. He's going to tap out. GG gets called. Okay. Okay. So, Findicta playing there from a what we thought uh, was a tough position, and coming out on top overall um, with some multiple harassment, finding finally one of those hatcheries, killing uh, that one hatchery with the, the one banshee, was it? Was it really just one banshee? Uh, two banshees. Ma Two banshees. Okay, okay, that mm. makes it a bit better, right? That that makes, uh, yeah. But it, it's still it's still a rough trade right there. Just having that go down. Um, game number three. This this really feels up in the air right now. This, uh, hmm, hmm. Yeah, it's it, going back and forth. It is. We do have to point out though that the first two maps uh, were the bigger maps in the pool, and for game three, it is going to be inside and out. No day to see. No. Well, I mean, that's really the only other big map in the pool. <laughs> but inside and out, a lot of great tank spots. A relatively small-ish map. Uh, Uko is going to be a tougher map for him than I think the first two. Yeah, yeah, I fully agree with you there. Vindicta must be feeling pretty good now going into this map right here because of that as well. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll see what he can do as we have spawning up at the top right for the Cranky Ducklings. It's Vindicta. And the bottom side, a red zerg fighting for Apprentice Esports. It is uh, Uko. Yeah, let's see if he's got anything else planned for this series so far. Uh, that 17, that, that speedling opening for Uko, it got a bit of damage done. I actually think it put him into a decent spot. Mm -hmm. But the follow through wasn't quite clean enough going into the mid game uh he missed a couple of his macro timings his gases weren't quite perfectly timed it it really did end up costing him a lot going into the the later stages of that game uh, like if he has that bane speed finished up a little bit earlier which i was alluding to like if he has it 20 seconds earlier he probably cleans that army up on the left side much more easily the follow through doesn't maybe maybe it doesn't kill the fourth base and then maybe we're looking at a completely different game. But Uko, he's still he's still got a few things that he needs to kind of clean up heading into this game number three. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hoping that he manages to do that. Of course, we all would love to see the, you said it before, the nuclear missiles coming out of Vindictus uh, Ghost Academies. Which I don't know exactly why they store their nuclear missiles in a, in a school, but... Uh. <laughs> Yeah, it's a weird place to put them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, academies are <laughs> not the best place, I would say, to put that. That's a well, less than ideal situation. <laughs> so the all the ghosts get the hand on experience, I guess. Yeah. They're like, all right, yeah. you're going to build this. And if you don't build it properly, I mean, it's <laughs> either you build it properly, it's not your problem anymore. Ooh, yeah. okay. Uko. Well. I mentioned Roach Rushes were on the table. This is a Roach Rush. You called it, man. One of them is going to be sprinkled in here as well. And the Roaches, um, I don't know. I know the, they, sometimes they feel like super strong. And I know other times it's just like, what would they do in here? What, what, 
were you ever thinking bringing these units across the map here? Um, this time around, well, I think we're going to go back into the Hellions, so that is a good sign. Vindicta doesn't seem to be all the wiser about these roaches yet either. Yeah, which is a little bit unfortunate because he had some information there that was very relevant to him. Uh, he, first of all, he sees no third base, and he saw the larvae were not morphed in. He saw that there was not that many drones at the natural just yet. More importantly than anything, I think it's the larvae that should tip yeah. him off. But, well, actually, the two things, the larva and the lack of a third base. And, okay, he does start up a bunker at the natural, so he's got at least a bit of a read on this. Roaches are going to move out. It is quite a few roaches. Eight roaches. And, okay. oh, Vindicta. Making a marauder, too. That is useful. Yes, that is going to be extremely handy. He will lose this Reaper on the way out, so at least he... Uh, Uko doesn't have to worry about that on the follow through. I love that he's building a an additional bunker on the high ground. Oh, yeah. As it stands right now, there's only one Marine to put on this bunker. <laughs> the Marauder's Marauder, not going to make it. Oh, no. boy. Oh, boy. Uko can just run by this bunker. This is actually very scary. It's nice the one Marine here kind of shooting from behind, I suppose, which is somewhat nice. Oh, these SCPs trying to blockade all the roaches so they stack up on top of one another. The Hellions. Doing a little bit of splash damage, but not that much. SCVs really have to put up their fisticuffs. Yeah, and they do not have the strongest fisticuffs now. We do see the medevac is able to uh, heal up some of those SCVs. A nice little hot pickup on the Hellion towards the end. But that was a lot of damage against a Vindicta who does not have three command centers. He's going to need to find a lot of counter damage here to help equalize the damage he just took like when an s uh, when a terran player is on uh just 19 scvs it's that's pretty crap that's a pretty terrible economy unless they're on three command centers uh vindicta oh, he's playing very non-committally actually with this and uko did build a couple of roaches as well as lings i think those roaches are in case the hellions were sent across the map but marauder already takes a lot of damage and Vindicta, I mean, he's going to be shoved back. Uko, he should just be droning like a madman right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's, he's just in such a wonderful position. And there's just so little that Vindicta can do that is actually scary uh, at this time frame. He does have that star pulse coming up, but with also spending his money on the third base at this moment in time, which gets scouted, like Uko has got to feel even more comfortable like you said, to just mass drone at this point. Yeah, and now the big question is, what is Uko's follow-up? Does he go into more roaches? Does he transition into Ling Bane? He's going to get one Evo Chamber, maybe just for a faster plus one Carapace than, mm -hmm. uh, than anything, and then we'll add on the second Evo Chamber. Obviously, you can't go into a macro game off just single Evo. It's, it's folly. Yeah. Yeah, you need three of them in, uh, you know, Blizzard terms, but then it's... Just... I don't know if that made sense. Because <laughs> you got three upgrades, right? Yeah. You need okay. to get all of them. Yeah. Well, I mean, but... yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you can... Uh, yeah, obviously, he's going to add on that second one a little bit later. Marauder drop will get deflected away. Good job. And, yeah, it's just going to be the head start on the plus one carapace. Gets that second gas. His economy is already a lot better balanced than it was in game number two, so this is already looking much better on the follow-through. I'm really worried for Vindicta in this series. Uko's in a pretty massive lead right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems to be coming a little bit of a repeat of that game number one, where Uko is just gonna gobble up that map once again, find himself onto 90-something drones, and yeah, just slowly but surely let Vindicta bleed out, right? Let him stay on those three to four bases, and just every time he tries to do anything else, you cut off another limb. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, once he tries to grow a fifth limb, you just keep cutting it off. You just keep him back yeah. to four limbs. You're like, exactly. haha, I've got 15 limbs. <laughs> it's like, that's not yeah. fair. <clears throat> He's like, no, 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 it's fine. Your limbs are stronger than mine one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but you, you got that's three true. times as many, and he's like, well... Shouldn't let me get so many limbs then, <laughs> idiot. Yeah. Should have had something else happen in this early game. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's 
gonna be a rough position for Vinicta, but I think he, sh he should still be able to make it work. Like, he is a player that is uh, usually heavily committed into the late game. He likes to play the macro games. He really isn't a, a cheesy kind of player, right? Um, this is this is the game he lives and breathes for. This is why he likes StarCraft 2. And, well, he's gonna have a chance here to prove that, but this might be a very tough one to make happen. Yeah, it certainly will. We are going to see the Ling Bane and those couple of roaches kind of pump it on forward trying to deal with this double drop. The single drop in the main base has been dealt with, and so far, once again, I am massively favoring Uko's position, maybe even more so than before. He gets up into the Hydras, uh, should be able to get those upgrades rolling here. And actually, in this case, considering his lead, I actually wouldn't even mind a third Evo, like, unironically, just for the, <laughs> yes. the plus one missile. Like, I actually, I, I don't often like the three Evo play, but there is a place for it, and I think this game might be that place. Well, perhaps, perhaps, you know, that's the reason why Blizzard lets you make three Evo chambers, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, we're going to see the, I would have loved to have seen, by the way, these roaches turn into ravagers just to be able to bile down tanks. We are going to be seeing the Baneling speed finishing up. It is 1-1 one, one versus 1-1. One, one. The 2-2 two, two has not yet started for Vindicta. This siege tank... Oh, why is it facing backwards? I guess it I know, the fire. other one. Oh, on the left. Oh, I didn't even see yeah, that. He's that got 15 was, kills. It was getting so many Uh Ooh, Focus fire, focus. I'm picking it up. There we go. And he's out of there. Uko. I mean, he's... Look at his supply. 40 supply ahead. He is dreamlanding it up right now. Um, oh man, how, how, okay, let's think this through. Infestation pit coming up, that will lead him into those Ultralisk and stuff like that, which is going to make it even more difficult here for Vindicta. There is a potential for a Ghost Academy still, I guess, for Vindicta as well to make some real plays happen. But he's not even on the fourth base yet. No. He just started his fourth command center. His 2-2 was later than you'd like to see, especially compared to Uko's plus two carapace. Uh, Uko should be going straight up into Hive right now. Like, he's got the infestation pit. There is no reason he shouldn't have Hive started on up. Uh, obviously, you know, drops are distracting. We do see a little bit of the creep spread getting pushed back here, which is a problem. I like that he has started Uko, that is, to go after these rocks, but he is having a little bit of trouble answering the multitasking of Vindicta. But he just needs to refocus up. There we go. There is that hive starting on up. I would love to see the lurker oh. den as well. And even going into the plus one missile for sure now that the plus one carapace is done. Or plus two carapace is done. There it is. Just fires that up. And I mean, honestly, the, this is just... This is a scary position for Vindicta right here. He really needs to slow the game down. Yeah, one, one thing I am seeing for him that is a big difference in the previous game is that... He is going for the siege tanks. We're already seeing liberators being constructed as well. He is approaching this already a bit differently, where he is uh, methodically trying to expand, right? And really have that hefty setup Terran kind of play. He's going to claim a space, and he's not going to try to let go of that anytime soon. Um, I, I think we may not even see him really go for that many pushes here because of that uh, either. Yeah, and um, he is trying to use these drops to keep Uko at home. Uh, but now Uko is going to be the one moving aggressively forward. We do have a nice defensive setup so far from Vindicta, but there's only one tank actually in on top of this base. And it is going to get jumped on almost instantly. Corrosive Biles will... Oh, he actually only lands a couple on those Liberators. There we go. One does go down. And the base will be forced to lift up. But that was... That was a totally fine defense so far from Vindicta. Gross Biles do take down the second Liberator. This is it's actually a, a decent start to the, the defense from Vindicta. But remember that this is his fourth base versus an Uko who is taking his sixth. Yeah. Yeah, that's the big thing. And that's six base. I mean, that is all the six bases. If he gets one more, he's going to just always have more minerals than Vindicta. Even if Vindicta takes up all the other bases. I need to get really close here with those bailings. However, the Marines are still so clustered up. And on top of the ramp, he decides to start shooting back. Which does still not give you a lot of breathing room for those Marines to split with. No, it doesn't. Uh, Corrosive Isles take down the bunker as well. Vindicta loses a lot. Uko throws away a lot as well, but he kills 22 SCVs, gutted this fourth base. 
he slowed down Vindicta, and he really traded army supply for army. Ah, yep. uh, and he got that eco damage. Now he's got his plus three carapace well on the way. His adrenal glands is more than half done. This is looking amazing for Uko right now. He's got both his Hydra upgrades, the one, two Hydras, the three, three of Vindicta really just got rolling, just started. I am, I am feeling a huge upset actually here. I mean, I, I said that I felt like Uko could get it done, but like no doubt Vindicta has much more, uh, much more experience. We are going to see the Lings and Bane flooding on forward. Now this time, oh, that was a very expensive set of losses for Uko. He really tried to grind the Banes in, and he actually just had the Marines, like, like they were just like a, a 300 type wall against the Lings. The Banes all <laughs> went down, and he, like, Uko lost so many Lings right there. Yeah. Yeah, it's still losable, right? He doesn't have a bank. He's not maxed out either. Um, sure, he's, he's only at 80. Okay, there we go. Now it's up to 90, making a couple more. 95, there we are. Perfect number. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that was a massive overcommitment from Uko. And there's no reason he shouldn't be adding on Vipers right now. There's no reason he shouldn't be going up into Lurkers. His opponent yep. doesn't have any ghosts on the field yet. It's still 45 Marines and four yep. tanks. Uh, like this yeah, is Ultralis would slap right now. They would just break through and they would they would beat him up like no one's business. Actually, yeah, yeah. The Ultralis would be an amazing decision here. Ooh, Vindicta. Oh, he will lose that uh, medevac. Uko is going to be able to defend this with the Mask Queen just encroaching in on this like a, a freaking horror film right there. <laughs> Oh man, I, even with the Liberators here, it's still in production. He's got two of them, two more coming up, but against the army that Uko is playing against, they're not really what you're looking for. No, not not so much. I mean, the Hydra count, what's the Hydra count at? Uh, it's only seven. So it's it's not like there's a ton of anti-air. There is still one Ravager here, but I mean, it, it takes three to kill the Liberators, obviously. I'm mm -hmm. I'm so sad that Uko is not getting into lurkers. He's not getting into vipers. Like this is this is his time to shine. He is on the verge of getting a massive upset, but he needs to to stay focused. There we go. Lurker den comes down for some reason at one of the outlying bases. Huh. Uh huh. That's confusing. That's uh that's very exposed. Ooh, double Nidus worm. Do love that though. Oh, yeah, look at that. Very cool. You don't see that enough. Oh, taking both the corner bases that remain here by Uko as well. Love to see that. Very smart play. Vindicta, though, on top of things, and is looking to push into both those locations, I'm pretty sure. Mm, there we are. Yeah, I don't think he was expecting that base in the top left to be uh, set, set on up there. We do see it looks like both Liberators were taken down, and now this drop on the right side as well will also get pushed back. Uko, he shouldn't be attacking into Vindicta. Not at this point, like attacking into the four base Terran who's been set up for so long is mm -hmm. a it's gonna be a tough situation. Now, actually, if he were to attack into this base, he might find an opening, but in order to make those attacks, you have to have some vision. So that means using changelings or uh flying overseers over the army like there has to be a way to find out what the situation is look at the production tab step fast look at that it's the ghost cloak that's right <laughs> why why does it say it says the nuke in is he wait you you can build both at the same time is that what i'm seeing no there must be another ghost academy Okay, there it is. That was so weird because I was clicking on the nuke and it like jumped me. <laughs> it jumped me to the cloak like three times, and uh, I'm like, uh, uh, that is interesting. That is weird. Imagine if that was possible. That, that we would see a lot more nukes that way. Maybe I don't know if we would. <laughs> uh, that would be kind of so, kind of funky. It would be funky. I don't know if it would make a, a, a difference though for a lot of people. Ooh, here comes that first Nidus worm. Uh, is it? Oh yeah, it's gonna get dealt with so easily. I love the bunkers, by the way, in the main base. Vindicta's like, nah, -uh, I'm not losing this to you. I'm like, I am upgrade. hunkering down. Yeah, they are so well upgraded. Ooh, Banes are gonna take some big damage from these tanks. He really only gets like, no, he only gets two tanks. Oh my goodness, that was so many Zerglings. 94 Zerglings and an unidentified purple thing. 
Uh, going oh. down right. What is this? Is that a well, Nidus worm well, head? How did Vindicta kill? Vindicta killed one of his own tanks as well. Okay. Oh, I guess that okay. does happen sometimes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The friendly fire, yeah. Not Maybe so friendly was, after that's all. That's why it's purple. I don't know. No, it's on the. Uh, it's there's one from Uko, one from Vindicta. Oh, hmm. drop. Oh, no, oh, that's Maybe, maybe it's like oh. a friendly marine you shot, so I don't know. Oh, God. Oh, that's quite a few lurkers that just went down. Uko is really starting to uh, struggle, actually, against this brick wall that has been Vindicta. Look at the nukes. <laughs> what? <laughs> Only overseers. It's I, like, I, wow, <laughs> we got to kill this detection right here, right now, boys. <laughs> ah, they that is in time. They should have done it sooner. That is incredible. Did he think those were like brood lords or what? Maybe. Or oh, wait, yeah. hang on. Were the, how many overlords does he have? He'll, oh my god, he was gonna kill all the overlords. Oh, that was wow, like really? all of Uko's overlords. There's. <laughs> oh my god. So Uko's just like is now. That's uh, why he made them into overseers. He's now oh. he's got twelve overseers. Oh my god, that is amazing. Ah. Uh. More nukes on the way. Oh. Nick always says that it's just good to have Nick's double up, even if you don't hit anything. Um, hold that for though. There is somewhat of a Zerg move going off in this moment. Oh, the Changelings. The Changelings actually body blocking some of those ghosts. Unfortunately, Uko runs out of units. He was like five or ten Banelings away on top of those ghosts because they were actually cornered from just like wiping out the most powerful unit in Vindicta's army. Hmm. It's funny how things go sometimes. Yeah, those changelings were actually oh. very nice. This is a little bit scary for Vindicta. Once again, we are going to see Uko moving forward. Now the tanks in the high ground getting some great damage done. I love the exit snipes on those overseers. It is actually, like, Uko's actually heavily supply blocked. He needs to build eight more overlords. Uko's yeah. got a massive bank, and Vindicta is still kind of on the ropes in this game. But it is not over yet. That's a very sad... Overseers are sad expensive, place. man. Like, yeah. people just say, like, just spam a bunch of overseers at some point, but, I mean, they are still expensive, and if you overmake them and then you just kind of lose them haphazardly here, it's very rough. I love the burrow attempts here by Uko as well. Very cool to see. Yeah, super cute. Uh, We're going to see Uko... Well, can he find this nuke? Okay, Activate he will be panic. able to... Will be able to get that. Yeah, but it, that's the thing. Like, Vindicta's right. Ghosts are... Like, nukes are very uh, attention-heavy to deal mm -hmm. with. Like, you really have to look everywhere. And that red dot, sometimes it's not the easiest thing to find. Uh, yeah. you, can, you can also use the sound cue. Like, you hear the, the like, the, the big... Oh, my God. This, this ghost is actually just going to run out of mm. energy and die. Oh, run away, little ghost. Yeah, no, but I'm pretty sure I've heard him say once as well that it's, it might be better to nuke the Zerg where there is, you know, fog of war. Just so that he's even more panicked. He's like, where is it then? I can't find it. Lings and Banes just got actually some pretty big connections on this army. Uh, the nuke did get dealt with. It. Vindicta wasn't able to get that sneaky in. I, I do agree with the concept of that as well. Now, Uko's yeah. bank is starting to diminish quite significantly now this is a nice move into the main base but vindicta once again on top of it he's such a fast player with the reactions mm -hmm. i think those are the same two marauders that were there from before yep that's their just that's their second uh, stamp i just yeah. watch watchers i just watchers yeah Ooh. oh vindicta was on a move command oh no Oh, he just lost like half of his bio forces and more than half of his ghost, I feel. And now the yeah. base goes down. We will see a and single drop on the top workers. side. Yeah, he lost 26 workers to that. Yeah. Drop does escape on out, but Vindicta just lost all of the momentum he was starting to build. We've got another nuke coming in on the bottom side. But, oh, oh my goodness. He actually, where's the overseer? Oh, the drones. Yeah. Oh, he gets two of them. The army of Uko isn't that technologically advanced still, however. Like, it's still baneling, circling Hydralisk. And in the previous game, when Vindicta did have those Widow Mines, right, it felt like the transition kind of killed him. Um, now it's like, you know, it, it almost feels like, well, I guess you do have to have some Widow Mines here against this kind of stuff, right? Because... 
They're just so good against these Baneling Flux and uh, Zergling Flux that try to roll in and just roll over your position. Yeah, at this point it feels like we're just watching the longest, slowest death animation for Vindicta. He has now fallen below 100 supply. Uh, I actually think that Ling Bane Hydra just sticking on this composition right now is wait. absolutely the way to play. Wait, 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 steadfast. Look at the money of Ugo actually, and then look at how much he still has to mine. There's not much left. This top oh. left corner is actually might yeah. be incredibly important. Like if Vindicta stops Ugo from mining here, he still has a shot. That is, and if he a... stops him from mining on the other side as well. That is a really great point. I actually wasn't paying attention to the, the bank of Uko. I was just so used to it being so high. But this is actually yeah. <laughs> a big deal. Okay, we are going to see another attack coming on in. It is heavy lurker transition for Uko. He's going to take out the last of the tanks. There's now zero tanks on the field. Vindicta can't afford to build tanks. And the ghost count is only four. There's actually nothing left that deals with the lurkers. The lurkers were the perfect choice in this situation. Yeah. He spent almost the last of his bank on those lurkers. He's still got a bunch of gas in the bank, but I mean, if he keeps Vindicta off this base, it almost doesn't matter that he's not mining. I mean, it does a little bit, but like Vindicta can't build really anything. Oh, and look at these changelings. Oh, they see everything. Oh, that's so nice for Uko. Oh, Lings somehow coming in from the- so many changelings. He's just, he can't be bothered. Yeah. <laughs> There's too many. He just wants like, to believe right. his army's that big. <laughs> we need a group of marines over here, and then the fake group of marines over here. Come on, guys. <laughs> but yeah, you did hit the nail on the head. If Vindicta... If Uko manages to get this base up in the top left, that's going to be pretty much lights out for the game. Yeah. Uh, look, He's building six marines at a time. Like, this is the mining for Vindicta, pretty much. He's only got maybe a thousand minerals that he can still mine from territory he controls and now we're where seeing the where are they where are the two brothers oh they're gone oh they left no, they left that post oh marines will find six queens kind of on their own on the top side they're actually going to be able to take down a lot of them now the transfuses do come out they were obviously very late for uko good stuff right here from vindicta finds a little bit of traction on that top side lanes are going to pop out of the nidus worm i was going to say uko should actually probably just save these Killing the production doesn't mm. help him much in this game. Killing units, killing, uh, keeping his opponent off a fifth base helps him win this game. And for that, yep. to that effect, securing a sixth. Well, re-securing a sixth because he was actually on six bases before. Uh, eight drones do go down. Oh man, this this base this base decides the game 100%. Yep. Yeah, Vindicta, I mean, does he have anything that can really do with it? He, he is making some Liberators. They have a little bit of a shot at this. But there's eight more Hydras on the way. Seven are available. Um, I, uh, are there no more Queens on the field? There's no more Queens on the field. Oh. That's interesting. So losing those six Queens, those were like all max energy Queens. That's actually pretty huge. That's a lot of potential healing gone. Now we are going to see a couple of lurkers kind of isolated on the top side. Oh, Uko. Oh, these spines are actually d interrupting all the shots. That was actually a lot of damage on these. Hang on, there's there's like, there's two medibacks on the field. He can't even... Oh, they're right together. Yeah, he can't even heal up these <laughs> ghosts right now. Yeah. Oh, man. Imagine some abducts. Oh, the spore crawlers. Run away! No! <laughs> Man, this is such a clutch situation now. We have Vindicta to still make this work, and I, I don't know. I don't know. Losing another orbital, having another base be available for Uko here to take potentially. That is, ah, oh, quite stressful. Here he goes with the infantry inside, takes out the lurkers, be able to shut down this base again. Now he just has one other lurker position to worry about. And oh, look at the Uko with the investors. That is a wonderful play. Yeah, he that has so small. He has that gigantic gas bank. Uh, important to note, he never retook this base. He's actually just been long distance mining it. Ooh, the scan will find these drones. That's actually quite nice for Vindicta. Uh, funnily enough, quite a few of them do make it out. Eight drones do make it out. But yeah, the Infestors is it's such a great decision from Uko. Uh, he, obviously, you know, against ghosts, they're not amazing, but there's only three ghosts on the field, and there's no healing. One fungal growth on this army could just instantly yep. end the game. 
That's all you need. One fungal. Just bring in one investor at a time. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, let's force try to fungal with this one. Let's try to fungal with this one. Let's, and then he won't have EMP anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I would love to see Vipers as well, just because of these Liberators. Oh! Oh, oh. interesting. He uses it for the Microbial Shroud. I would prefer the... Oh my god. Oh my god, he actually... He... He just dropped a Manor Microbial Shroud on his opponent. <laughs> <laughs>